What's going on, everybody? It is childish. We are back at it again, uh, making a uh, different video, kind of doing like a, uh, a composition showcase, like a B10, B10 setup showcase. Um, I recently put out a video uh, with regards to uh, the Man Crush Monday, and I got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, excitement uh, from you know hearing about Knox here, but. Funny enough, uh, like like maybe maybe like a third of the comments uh, that I got was um, everybody was going crazy about the Necropolis team. So <laughs> what I thought I would do is uh, just do a uh, like a B10 compilation here, just showing all three setups, just to kind of show you guys where I'm at, and then we can go ahead and look at the uh, units and runes afterwards. So we'll start out with the first one that everybody should be focused on. Uh, we got ourselves. The Giants B10, y'all know what it is. All right. So this is the setup here. Theo running the lead, and two Lucians and Galleon and Bernard. So uh, pretty standard, I think. Uh, uh, the du the double Lucian, you know, buffer Bernard and then damage dealer kind of comp is is pretty typical. Um, a lot of people will uh, take a look at this and, and wonder why I I do the things that I do when it comes to leader skills. Uh, I think I think I was talking to Pando actually uh, a week or two ago, because I know he runs uh, something just a tad bit different, uh, but it's 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 with relation to our composition. So I'll, I'll explain it here. Um, you know, in this particular scenario, I'm running a Theo lead, and uh, uh, what is it? Yeah, Theo lead for the critical rate, and then of course we have ourselves the two you know two Lucians, Galleon, Bernard, and whatnot. So. Giving myself an extra 24% critical rate versus 33% attack power. Which one's better? Well, it really all depends on your current situation, right? A lot of people, a lot of people will opt for the 33% attack power so that everyone can get it. Um, but if you, uh, for me personally, uh, all three of my damage dealers, Theo, uh, and my both of my Lucians, are sitting at 75% critical rate. 70, 75 to like 79 or something like that. So. With Theo's leader skill, that allows me to get 100% uh, critical rate for all three. And so, in my particular situation, I feel like I feel like there's a little bit more value in going for the critical rate than than the leader skill. And, it, and it's, you just gotta all put it into perspective, right? You know, would you rather have um, you know X amount of attack power uh, critting, you know, at 100 100% crit rate for 170 crit damage, which is basically what my stats are for all three of my units or would you like x you know times 0.33 uh and then with a 75 percent chance to critically hit you know with that added damage for me um i'll take the 100 percent critical rate over a 75 percent critical rate any day of the week um especially when you got uh units like these three that are doing um that are that have multiple hits or whatnot it definitely pays off uh, to have a higher crit rate because you know the more chances you have to hit the more chances you have to fail right so I kind of want to keep that high and mighty boom um, Other than that really nothing else to add Bernard could be replaced you guys saw Charlotte was in there I could you know replace Charlotte for Theo, but the reason why I do the comp that I do is because um, as you guys know um, You know it's never guaranteed to have them land the skills that they want and I want to make sure that every time I get to that giant, I get that defense break right away. So I want to have different options if they're not available. So Bernard is providing me the attack power and the defense break. Galleon provides a defense break. And then Theomars, if, if all of that fails, Theomars has his second ability that can uh, provide the de defense break. Wow. I don't like it, but I'll, I'll, hold, <laughs> I'll hold on to it. So... Again, guys, when you're looking at comps like that or you're playing around with a similar situation like that, you know, consider the fact that uh, the attack power is a really, really strong option. Um, but you have to consider the fact of what critical damage brings to the table. The multiplier of critical damage is second to none. And you have to uh, look at the star you're at, look at your critical rate, you know, look at your critical damage. And, and if you are at that situation where you... You know you're you're not at 100% critical rate, which most people aren't. Then then consider the fact that you might find more value in running critical rate over attack power. Okay, um, again, that's not for everybody. It just depends on your current runes uh, at your at. So um, again, that's just my personal opinion. I'm sure some people have uh, other things to show for or other things to comment about. Uh, so this is probably the biggest change in my uh, B10 setups. 
Uh, we got ourselves the yellow comp now. If you guys remember about a month, month and a half ago. I guess it was probably about a month ago. I was fortunate enough to pull my uh, first vertihill. Um, I about blew up on the uh, <laughs> on the video. And so, you know, obviously I went right away and, and six started completely so I can play around with um, various compositions. Uh, I had the runes at that time, I had leftover runes to, to basically make them a combination of either, um, I, initially it was Swift Revenge just to make it very, very speedy, but then I realized uh, I had I had an opportunity to go with uh, Revenge, Double Revenge Nemesis, still keeping him at like 210 speed and, and, and 2k attack power so I could help him out. You know, obviously uh, you've seen, you guys have seen a lot of videos out there. Uh, generally, a lot of people like to run attack on six uh, just to get, um, you know, a little added damage when he's, when we're doing these yellow teams. And of course, being a, a double revenge nemesis, when I initially saw that I can get basically the same stats as a swift revenge set with the double revenge nemesis, I wanted to go ahead and try it out because I do want to play around with Vertihill in, in many aspects of the game, not just PVE. And so initially, my thought was, let's go ahead and do double revenge nemesis for the time being and get it going. Um, I've, you know, since then, obviously talked to a lot of people and they, you know, enlightened me on the value of, you know, a violent revenge, a violent spec, uh, Vertihill, but, you know, and then, and of course, a violent revenge Vertihill, if you can't possible, it's definitely, it's definitely even more of a game changer if you have it. And, and I understand the strength of violent, but at the time I did not have any runes to be, uh, you know, switched around with or whatever. So I went ahead and just put the double revenge nemesis for now and then waited to rune removal to go ahead and play around with it. Uh, for the most part, though, uh, this is pretty darn reliable. Uh, I, I would have to say it's anywhere in that 93 to 95% range. Um, I, as you will see in the runes later on, um, I'm running a different uh, Spectra than some. Some of that, some of them run, you know, a Swift Base Spectra. I, I intentionally run a Violet because I feel that even though I can't, you know, control what he's going to cast or what I, I prefer the opportunity to cycle through his skill so that if I don't cast my if I don't cast my slow you know right away in the first turn I still have an opportunity to um, you know get that additional turn and cast it again um, and I think that's that's where the it, it kind of all comes into play here that's why I like the the violin set on the vertigo because it's uh, again like if you if you're fortunate enough to get the additional turn um, you know you get you get an opportunity to push everybody's attack bar a little bit more sure there could be a scenario where um, the attack bars are are completely full, and it's just it's just uh, wasted attack age. But I prefer the opportunity to you know max out that attack age when it is low versus just um, just have one opportunity with a little bit additional speed and, and, and to do you know to to go ahead and, and go for it. Um, the cool thing about it is is because it's passive, it's a consistent attack age buffer. It's just very very reliable. And again, actually showing showing you right there, um, he missed the speed buff on the first turn. But he went for it again and he got it landed it so if he gets it on the first turn it's gg no questions asked um in this particular composition you guys see it a lot with regards to yellow teams on the high-end players um i don't consider myself a high-end player mind you i just uh this is i i i was fortunate enough to have what they have uh, minus uh, I'm, I'm not using hua so a lot of people like to use hua to manipulate the attack gauge provide a little slow but because i got spectre in there um, i want to use a different speed based unit that could still do a good amount of damage, and Theo Mars is right up there with Hua on the on the rune quality. Um, but the same the same thing goes for what I stated in the Giants run. I'm a big big advocate of, of trying to uh, you know bring bring the units that are going to yield me the most the most you know consecutive wins, but try to bring a combination of units that allows me to uh, get myself uh, extra opportunities to defense break. Okay, because let's let's say Spectre runs it. And let's say he lands a slow, he lands a tech H buff, and he's just going ham, right? It's going to mean nothing if I don't have a defense break on. The Galliard can get his attack buff, um, you know, and whatnot, and, and I can go crazy with Tark and, and Theo, but the damage that is done to the boss is, you know, reduced by a drastic amount when that defense break is on. You guys know that. So I want to make sure that I have additional opportunities to play around with it and get it done. Um, shout out to Karanther one time. I, he was playing around with his... Uh, Stella mixing up Stella in there and uh, I think he took out Tark and got Stella in there 
he's running a crit damage Stella. I'm not, so I can't I can't do what he do. I'm not a boss like him. But uh, it is cool to see some of the units that not are, that that are not considered generally for you know typical teams you know used in, in, a, in a unique situation like that. So you know, bet, check out his channel if you haven't seen that video. It's probably about a week or two ago. Some good stuff there. Uh, but yeah, that is my comp, and again, we'll go through the runes at the very end, guys, uh, take a look at the ball, and then last but not least, the one that you guys were uh, extremely excited to see, um, the Necropolis B10 run. So, we gotta give a shout out to my Epic Fail Alpha crew, we got a, we got a uh, chat channel called Epic Fail Evolution, where we basically theorycraft uh, day and night, 24-7-365, son, and we were talking about a variety of combinations when it comes to Necropolis, and what we can do. And, you know, obviously when we first start out, we, we take a very, very standard approach, whether it's a mono element based team or bringing in two healers, you know, so on and so forth. And, you know, as you progress with your units and your runes, you realize that you can get away with a little bit of stuff, as you guys saw with, and you, and you guys see this every day, right? With, with the people that post variety of runes. When we first started out in, in, in Giants and Dragons, we weren't sitting there with YOLO comps. We were sitting there with consistent, you know, tankyish type of comps that had you know two healers and support and this and that whatever and you know you we went you know we went pretty basic with that um with regards to me I, I knew that at the time that necropolis came out i understood the value of consistent runs versus speed runs and i i played around initially um with a composition that uh ran i ran roke with um, i was a big big fan of roke if you guys remember from my uh, YouTube channel uh, way back when I had I think my first B10 clear was with uh, a couple of five-star units and then Roke was one of my defense breaking units I, I just felt that even though Roke was broken at the time and he didn't he didn't uh, we didn't get the value out of the additional procs we re, uh, reducing the shield I still felt that he had an amazing opportunity to um, be a, a very very much value because of his team up skill you know a lot of people um, overlook that skill being able to use the team up and get another person on board to go ahead and do another attack um, is extremely strong but because not just you get the opportunity to have the multi hit but you also get the opportunity to have what is it called uh, reduce their skill from what I understand and correct me if I'm wrong um, that when you when you when the, he uses the team up with somebody it, it actually lowers their cooldown time because they're just using their skill and so I, I find it extremely valuable because all three you know three out of my four units that are with with rogue whatever um they have you know they have multi-hits um lucian is in there which is very very unorthodox or whatnot but um when you're considering what it brings to the table um it will make sense at the end of the day so um the rate at which we clear the boss is kind of is kind of controlled right because we have that speed lead but one thing that we have to think about when when um, you know looking at these compositions is trying to focus on what we can control versus what we cannot control and one thing that we can control is the speed at which we clear every single stage leading up to the boss so when I look at my uh, Giants uh, teams or my TOA speed clear teams you know a lot of these compositions that people like to use are Lucians right and so shout out to my Epic Fair Evolution channel they were talking about you know combining a variety of compositions and saying hey we should try we should try Lucian in there and then I think it was uh, Mibu, um, one of our Guardian Three players, that was saying, "Oh, actually, yeah, I've I've been using I've been losing Lucian for a while. He it's Lucian's a, an auto sub two minute you know composition." And I'm sitting here like, "Okay, bro. Obviously, you, you know you're you, you're a boss. You know you got some you know great great runes, but with the Lucian, you know you just can't you know call it a sub two minute run. And when but when you actually, if you if you have a high you know uh, high quality units you know ruined up, skilled up, and whatnot, and then you bring you know one of your Lucians, and this is a Lucian that you've been working on for years, um, fine tuning its speed, its attack power, its damage, whatever, there is quite a substantial difference in the speed at which you clear. Generally speaking, uh, some people take anywhere from uh, 15 upwards of you know maybe 30 to 40 seconds um, clearing. A you know one of these stages leading up, whereas Lucian, if you like, if you see in a, in a previous run that we did, if you if he gets the attack buff combined with his attack leader skill for dungeon, and then he does his amputation magic like you saw right there, that takes you from a twenty to thirty second uh, level, right? That uh, each sub level whatever to a five second run. You know you drastically reduce the speed at which you clear the 
earlier stages and then it allows you to um, get here quicker and just go to town so in this particular composition um, it, it's it, it works really really good uh, you got Colleen running the first uh, attack and then you got chilling going Lucian's going and then my two defense uh, breakers and slowers are going to be following up there uh, to finish off and with this particular combination um, I, I, I am surprisingly enough I'm, I'm more fortunate than, than not that I I will will get to the point where uh, the skills just flow so well that I'm able to clear the necropolis boss uh, without without him pulling one of the units now of course I think he already pulled uh, yeah pulled the unit on this particular run but um, it's definitely it's definitely doable once you get the the high quality uh, runes up there so other than that though I think that's pretty much it for this time composition we'll take a look at the uh, the units on these particular runes here um, again uh, I'll show you when we get to the uh, onto uh, the water list here but um, so you can kind of get an idea of what the stats are uh, so if you're trying to get get some of the numbers let's see let's see let's see uh, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll kind of go in reverse order We'll start out with um, the Lich uh, Regal, okay? Violet Revenge, attack for damage attack. Um, not really focused on the speed because of the fact that it's, I'm just making sure that he is, uh, you know, slower than every other unit that I bring to the table and all of my units are anywhere from 50 to 75 speed. So the cool thing of it is, is that this allows me to, um, you know, constantly improve his runes, you know, whether it's through grindstones or just better runes to improve his speed so that I can use him in other aspects of the game. Right now, <clears throat> excuse me, right now I just use him for, I just use him for uh, Necropolis and then if I want to have fun in, in R4 speed runs or a little bit of Arena or Guild Wars, I'll do it, but I generally don't run it because he's, his speed does not match up with the other, with my other damage dealing speed based, you know, units or whatnot. I need to, I need to sync him with regards to speed and I can do that uh, I just need to get the runes or whatnot, as you'll see here in the, in the rest of the, the, the units here where their speeds are at. Um, so he's the slowest one by far. The next one up uh, is going to be Roke. Uh, so Roke, uh, sitting with 17k hit points, uh, speed, attack, attack again on Violent Revenge. You guys know what it is, standard setups uh, for, for, for a composition when it comes to Necropolis. You're going to be using a lot of Violent Revenge. Um, he is not on crit damage. That could speed up. That can definitely speed it up. Um, so, you know, later on down the road, I'll I'll consider it. But in my particular composition, um, I need I needed to keep a certain amount of speed, you know, ahead. And you guys might have guessed, right? Well, you're you're running speed on two, and your and your Rico only has, uh, you know, 25 bonus 25 speed or whatnot. Why not, you know, go for some kind of a, a attack rune with maybe a speed sub tat. And just make sure you're over, you know, regal speed. I would love to do that, but as you might have guessed, I don't have the runes. Um, obviously, that would be the, you know, the case. Um, so I can, because once I get that improvement, you know, then that will that will drastically improve uh, my speeds even more. Um, the team that I run right there uh, for the Necropolis, if I didn't say it already, is a sub two minute team. I'd say anywhere from 145 to 150 on average. It can get down to 130 if I. If I clear the boss without getting pulled, if I just have a nice run of, of skills and, 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 and whatnot. So um, that is Rook right there. Uh, let's see. And then we got ourselves. Uh, the next one up after that is going to be Lucian. And we are using the uh, the one that is technically rude vampire. Everybody gets a kick out of it. Um, they're like, what, what is this vampire Lucian childish is running? Um, this is something else. Like, this is, this is, this is. Is this, is this normal? Is this standard? Like, what not? Like, no, guys. Um, as you can see uh, on the substats here, I'm just using the vampire runes because this is some of the better runes that I have. And it allows me to go with attack power on the second slot versus going with uh, speed on two and still getting a great amount of attack power, a great amount of critical damage, so on and so forth. So because of the fact that he's running under 170 speed, it allows me to keep my uh, chilling, uh, you know, going before him. And still, you know, get myself the damage here. So actually, I, I did get another speed rune here that I want to go ahead and, and slap on here real quick. Got to get it in. Um, speed, I'm, I'm trying to improve, you know, all the speed of my units, but I don't want to, I don't want to get my illusions way too out of, out of range. But uh, overall, the, uh, the speed is still within, within reason. So um, 
vampire or something else. I don't I don't see you need the need to go with a vampire Lucian like some people say yes go with the vampire Lucian. To me, if you get like I, I'm running the vampire Lucian because of the runes, right? I already said it, but he has eleven K hit points. Now you you might find yourself in a scenario like Rogue where I'm running, you know, speed attack, attack or whatever, but I have the hit point substats to get myself at that 17 ATK mark. You might find yourself with a nice uh random set broken you know set of whatever that gets you you know just happens to get you those crazy hp subsets so you don't have to worry about it because i'm running the low hp lucian it definitely helps that i have vampire i've, I've gotten into situations where things got a little out of hand and uh i was very fortunate to have a uh, vampire because it kept me alive but that being said the the majority of my damage um that is set up for my necropolis comes from my rogue and my uh Rigel. so i'm even even if i lose this unit you know halfway through i'm really not too concerned his his he doesn't have a lot of multi hits with the exception of the third skill you know he's really there for just speed clearing the first five teams uh first five stages or four stages and then you know giving us the attack power boost to make you know Rigel's and rogues damage even crazier um and then of course like i said before we have chilling chilling was part of my dragons initial dragons yellow comp Took him out because I didn't like the uh, the speed casting like most, but I kept him. I never moved him out of um, out of the uh, Necropolis team because I just feel you know this particular skill set has you know a lot of value. Um, this one same thing as Rogue speed attack attack again. I could run crit damage, um, but in, in my particular situation, certain runes that I have on here is giving me the speed that I want, the HP subsets that I want. And so you can kind of see that why certain runes are the way they are. Um, my critical rate is generally low. I mean, of course, I get the buff that is put on, but it's still not a reliable amount of critical rate to get the job done. Whereas if you see on Regal, uh, Regal is exactly where I want it to be because uh, with regards to my critical rate buff that I get, that's going to put me at 100% critical rate, making sure I hit every single crit every single time when I'm hitting the boss. Um, if you didn't see it before in these videos or my unit showcase videos, um, with these particular stats, the 2k attack, the 155 crit damage, the max skill on 2, with the attack buff from Colleen and the attack leader skill from Lucian, Regal hits for 14k ticks, 4 times each, totaling 56,000 damage in this particular comp with these stats and these subsets. So that kind of gives you an idea of how strong this particular team can be or this particular unit can be when you... Uh, create a team that's based around his abilities uh, making him stronger and again with, with regards to his second skill being uh, a two turn cooldown this is up a lot guys especially if you're running the violence set so it's definitely valuable if you uh, if you have one on board so shout out to all my people that uh, that fought it away like six or seven liches I know I did I, I had to spend devil mon on this unit and oh I'm so upset because I, I had to give away so many so but anyways, back to the mix here. Um, last but not least, uh, we have ourselves to Colleen. Colleen is just set up for a raiding, but obviously it's a vile, it's a very, very important unit for um, Necropolis 2, provided the attack power buff. I love the three turn attack power uh, for a three turn cooldown. Very, very valuable. Um, when you get when you get yourself uh, the, the subsets that you want to provide a good amount of attack power, Good amount of HP and whatnot, you will realize that you don't need to run two healers. A lot of us started out with like a Colleen and a Bella, but you can find yourself a replacement and get a little aggressive um, with that second healer and, and just run Colleen. Colleen can get the job done uh, despite the fact that she heals uh, based off of percentage versus a, a flat HP. She still does a great job of, of keeping everybody alive because it's every three turns that she heals versus every four to five turns like some of the healers out there. So really strong uh, unit, but everybody knows how important she is. If you don't have one, if you're new to the game, you don't have one, don't don't feel bad about starting to uh, awaken one right now. Start skilling them up because you will uh, use it later on down the road. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So moving on to the uh, Dragons B10 team, we will start out with our newest addition to the crew, Vertihill. Violent Revenge, uh, speed, critical rate, and attack. Again, I played around with uh, double Revenge Nemesis. I played around with uh, Triple Revenge. I was able to get Triple Revenge in there and wanted to do more PvP stuff. But at the end of the day, I wanted the opportunity to run a violent set and, and hopefully I could be fortunate enough to you know, keep him above 200 speed, which is what I wanted. And, and I did get him up there at 215 speed. Um, 
overall, I, I'm not really too happy with his attack power. My other compositions ran uh, about 2k attack, and I'm only at 1600. But because I have the violence set, it definitely makes up for it, not just for the damage, but for the um, attack bar manipulation. So I like it. Um, and we got ourselves the next one. Who's the next one here? Oh, Galleon? No, I'm sorry. Spectre. Spectre's the next one leading off. Um, we got ourselves uh, speed, critical rate, accuracy. Um, you can see right there, a high critical rate, high accuracy. A lot of people will uh, play around with the critical rate or critical damage that's set up. But again, uh, the damage is based on the enemy's max HP. So you're going to do a good amount of damage uh, at this boss. I prefer to have 100% critical rate. Um, on this particular setup versus a 70% chance to do 140 critical damage, whatever. Um, but all, if, if, if you find yourself more reliable than not, that's just it's doing what it has to do, then great. But for me, if you're starting to play around with the Spectra, I value critical rate over critical damage at this particular start because the damage is based on the enemy's max HP. But then uh, if, as your runes improve, if you can keep your critical rate high um, and get the critical damage, then by all means, go for it. Uh, but keep in mind that you have to keep your accuracy as high as possible. This composition, your, any YOLO composition does not work unless you can manipulate uh, the attack bar on the right tower, okay? Galleon, uh, he, I used him for so many things. Skill Wars, uh, the Dragons team, uh, TOA. Uh, so speed, HP, attack. I'm going with the hybrid format because I get the accuracy that I want on this particular rune. I get the attack, extra attack power in addition to hit points that I want. So you can tell that a lot of these runes are really kind of there just to help me get the HP, attack power, speed, and accuracy. You know, I know it sounds kind of silly because that's, you know, that's what we all shoot for. But sometimes uh, we get too focused on certain uh, subset runes that provide us a little bit additional something or the other, right? A lot of people will recommend Violet Revenge because you have the opportunity to um, counterattack and, and, and land a defense break. Whereas me, I value the opportunity of providing a focus subset that helps me attain the 100% accuracy that I want to make sure stuff lands versus having taken that away, having to reduce the amount of accuracy and giving myself a 50% chance to possibly counterattack on that. Hopefully that makes sense there so you guys understand what it is. So if you do have one, make sure you max kill it out. Uh, definitely going to find more value. Um, Tark, um, added him when I got Vertihill. I actually brought them up both around the same time. Um, you guys see this time and time and again. Uh, this is a really, really good unit when it comes to... Um, Dragons, B base, Yolo comps. Again, the has that kind of rogue like effect where you bring, you know, a couple of allies on board. And again, if I remember correctly, any kind of team up ability when it comes to rogue or or Tark, when you team up with somebody and they attack, you reduce their cooldowns uh, by one as if they were attacking on their own. So that helps out a lot with Spectra. Keep her cooldowns times low so they, they could do the slow. Um, or Theo Mars if I need that defense break or whatever, or Galleon providing the attack buff defense break combo. So again, a great combination there. Um, a unit that is uh, has an attack power based on speed. So combining Vertihill speed lead plus this, uh, I'm, and these particular stats is doing upwards of 17k damage. Really good stuff. Um, I looked at a lot of Tarks around, and, and for me, I saw a lot of them anywhere from that 1500 to 1700 attack power, 150 to 100, and you know 150 plus great damage, and making sure they got 85% critical rate. So I'm liking the stats that I have here. Um, this is where I wanted to be, and I synced up his his speed um, to go after Gallia because I want Gallia to allow to apply, apply the defense break. I'm gonna get a lot more value out of Tark's third skill if a defense break is on the unit versus not. And so that's why I said I'm bringing Theomars, I'm bringing Gallia, I'm bringing units that are gonna have other opportunities to provide a defense break. So when units like Tark go ham and provide that that third skill. I'm getting more value out of that third skill because there is a defense break uh, that's on there. Um, so, yeah, buddy. All right. Uh, we already went over Spectra, Galleon, and Vertihill, and Theo. Oh, Theo. No changes on Theo. Just a violent set attack or damage attack with good speed subsets. As you guys know, um, he is a great, great unit. I'm doing what I can to keep on getting his hit points up a little bit. They were sitting at 18k, then they dropped when they changed out some runes. And so now I'm, you know, trying to improve them there. Um, okay, and that was the Dragons team. Let's go ahead and finish off with the uh, Giants P10 team. We don't have to showcase um, a couple of the units because we already did. You guys already saw Theomars. You already saw the Vampire uh, Lucian. And then we got ourselves Despair Lucian. 
Um, I'm a big, big fan. I mean, even though it, it didn't, it, again, it comes down to using the, using the runes that allow you to get the speed that you want, the attack power, and the critical damage that you want. Um, I wanted a, I wanted to get 175 uh, speed Lucian, 160, 170 speed Lucian without going speed on two. And a lot of people sacrifice uh, attack power on on two to, to get their speed where they want to so they can, you know, sync up their Lucians with the Bernards when they're doing their arena, right, and, and the YOLO. But... Me personally, I saw from other, other uh, you know, top end players out there on all servers that you definitely can get the numbers you want without sacrificing speed onto. You just gotta play around with your roof. And it just so happened that I did have a combination of a despair and blade set that allowed me to do that. And so that's just why I run them. But if you've ever seen any of my uh, arena videos where I do use Lucian, as boring as it is, it is nice to have a despair set on one of your Lucians because I feel like. Um, if for whatever reason you don't get that critical hit that you want or whatever uh, Maybe it's like a crushing hit or something like that just standard hit you don't crit or Or you don't kill them completely you have another opportunity to stun them and, and give you that additional turn You know deny them the turn so you can get another turn in and kind of clean up clean up mess after you're done. So um, Very very nice. I definitely this is my slower Lucian. So my goal is to um, Essentially get him from a despair blade to a despair will with keeping the same stats the reason being for that is guys is because certain teams that I fight is I'm going to be running into people that are bringing um, nemesis to the table whether it's from a Praha or a uh, from a Veramos but most notably Veramos is, is the big thing to look after um, if you guys have heard in uh, many of streams that, that other uh, YouTubers or streamers have done uh, we'll give a shout out to Scafidus I believe Scafidus was the one that posted the Reddit forums on his AO comp talking about the value of will on your second Lucian because it brings you uh, it brings you the opportunity to prevent getting stunned so that you can Lucian you know use your Lucian the second time. How many times did you guys run a Lucian comp and gotten stunned on your on your second Lucian because Veramos had the nemesis and, and and went went ahead of you and then stopped it. So there's my <laughs> there's my wife there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And then. Um, then we got, last but not least, we got my Bernard, PV base, PVP base Bernard. Uh, nothing special, just speed, hit point, resistance. Uh, I'll be talking about this resistance here in a different video, but um, definitely uh, just doing whatever I can to get the speed as high as possible. I'm not concerned about certain stats or whatnot. Obviously, the accuracy from the subsets is nice, um, but at the end of the day, Bernard is just there to speed up the units and provide the attack and defense break. Um, for it speed up the units for my PVE, but I'm getting the value out of uh, my Giants Potentine because again, he he provides that additional reliable um, he provided that additional reliable break uh, on the uh, on the uh, Giants Giants unit. Sorry, as you guys might have guessed, my wife <laughs> my wife's distracting me. So uh, we just had uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll put a, I'll put a sneak peek of why she's going. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! After this video. So you guys can see so there's a reason why I'm able to make this video right now on my day off without a raging baby so stay tuned for that but um, that's pretty much it guys if you have any questions again um, shoot me a message down below in the comment section if you like this video please do me a favor um, go ahead and smash that like button as always I try to bring you guys the best content I can I know that a lot of us out there uh, we provide various compositions uh, you know with regards to any team that we bring a variety of dungeons and it's very very cool to see what people think about it whatnot. You find some unique and unorthodox setups that are great, but if you don't get the opportunity to understand why they do what they do, you know, what's the point in trying to, you know, emulate that? So that's what I wanted to bring to you guys today. I wanted to go, go ahead and talk about it a little bit. I apologize. I know this video is a little bit long, but uh, I know that with, with bringing three different teams, there was going to be a lot of talking at the end. So, um, but that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys' support as always. Thank you for tuning in. It's your boy Childish with Childish Plays checking out. Take care, and we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.